So Core Happiness is this model I created for the new book to really try and help people understand that happiness is a muscle that you can strengthen. It's a skill that you can develop. It's not something you have to just stumble across one day when the world around you is a certain way, when uh, people around you treat you a certain way. Happiness is something you can train, you can get good at if you know what to work on. So core happiness, I want people to think of as a three-legged stool. Each of these three legs is separate, but they are essential. And if any of these legs starts to weaken, your feelings of happiness will also start to weaken and ultimately collapse. So the three legs of this core happiness stool are the three components of happiness, and they are alignment, contentment, and control. So alignment is essentially when the person who you are inside and the person who you want to be out there in the world, the person you are being out there in the world are one and the same. So when your inner values and your external actions start to match up more and more, that is when you are living more aligned. That's one leg of the stool. The second leg is contentment. Contentment is what are those things that you do in life? What are those experiences that make you feel calm, at peace? When are you at peace with your life and your decisions? That's what I'm talking about when I say contentment. And the third leg is control. Now, I thought long and hard about the word control because, again, like happiness, I think the word control can be misinterpreted. And I really wrestled with this light, but I did go for control in the end because I found that most of my patients, most of the people I spoke to about it, kind of got what I meant straight away by it. So when I say control, I am not talking about controlling the world and controlling external events. Because the last two years, I think, have taught us all that, that the world is uncontrollable. Even if we want the world to go a certain way, the world will do what the world does, right? So when I say control, I mean a sense of control. What are the things that you can do regularly, on a daily basis, perhaps, that give you a sense of control over your life. Because I know from clinical experience, but also from the research, that people who have a strong sense of control over their lives, they have higher motivation, they have higher levels of academic success, they have higher social maturity, they are healthier, they're happier. And conversely, people who lack a sense of control over their lives have very high levels of psychological stress. And so these are the three legs of the core happiness stool. And what I really wanted with this model is for people to understand that actually happiness is something you can work on. So we understand that if you go to the gym every day and do bicep curls, we know that we're going to get stronger biceps. And I wanted to create a simple model that also gives people the idea that, oh, if I want to become happier, um, I need to work on these legs of the stool, right? So Everything in the book is completely free, right? These are just ideas, simple exercises that people can do that work on alignment, that work on contentment, that work on control. And as you strengthen each one of those legs on the stool, the side effect is going to be that you feel happier more often. So you're not actually directly working on happiness. You're working on alignment. You're working on contentment. You're working on control. These are much more tangible things, I think, for people to really focus on. And the side effect is that you're going to be happier more often. So that's kind of the rough model. And throughout the book, there's all kinds of ideas and exercises that work on different legs of the stool. And the feedback I've got to say so far has been absolutely incredible in the UK. I've never had a book launch like this. It seems to really be landing with people, really helping people reflect on their lives. And I'm incredibly passionate about it. And I really think this model. I haven't found a situation yet where this model doesn't hold true, right? I spent a long time trying to create a model that I felt would hold true in every situation that people could put in their back pocket, take it out with them in their life and go, oh, I see. That's why this is helping me. This is why I feel good after that. Oh, this is why when I do that, I don't feel so good. I don't know. I had a patient once who did something a bit underhand at work to get a promotion, took credit for something that really wasn't their thing. And this is a prime example of alignment and this idea that we can't hide from ourselves. Yes, they got the promotion, but in the late hours when you're lying in bed, you can't escape from what you did. You know what you did. That's not 
that person was not acting in accordance with their values. So they understand now, oh, I was weakening my alignment leg. That's why I felt less happy afterwards, despite on the outside getting a promotion and a pay rise. So I think it's very helpful. I think it works for people across all sections of society, no matter what uh, job they're in, no matter really their socioeconomic status. I understand that socioeconomic status matters. I understand that money does play a role here. But just to sort of finish that thought about money, I don't think money brings happiness in and of itself. I think what money does do is remove common sources of unhappiness. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day, so make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever wanna see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.